When Paul wrote Ephesians, he was in prison. His guards were Roman soldiers. Therefore, he was constantly surrounded by the vivid image of a geared up soldier when he struggled with spiritual attack and physical persecution. When Paul said, put on the full armor of God, it was his way of saying, strap on your gear for battle, because the battle is pretty fierce. Have you ever heard someone say, put on the full armor of God? Well, that's a reference to the end of Paul's letter to the Ephesians when he wrote this. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Ephesians 6, 10 through 17. When Paul wrote Ephesians, he was in prison. His guards were Roman soldiers. Therefore, he was constantly surrounded by the vivid image of a geared up soldier when he struggled with spiritual attack and physical persecution. When Paul said, put on the full armor of God, it was his way of saying, strap on your gear for battle, because the battle is pretty fierce. Here's our list of gear. First up, the belt of truth. <sighs> the belt of truth referred to the cinculum militare, a leather belt that included a heavy apron hanging in front of the soldier's lower abdomen and groin. The leather apron had brass plates that provided even more protection and was usually the first piece of gear put on by a soldier. The belt of truth represents the truth of God, which directly confronts the lies that our enemy wants us to believe. The more we wear the belt of truth, the more we can stand in confidence that God's words reign supreme and that no lies will take root in our hearts and minds. The belt of truth provides the protection and resolve to live in God's truth rather than being swayed by all the lies and misinformation in our news, media, and culture. Next up, the breastplate of righteousness. There were two types of Roman breastplates. The first was fashioned by joining several broad, curved metal bands together using strong leather thongs. The second was a kind of chain mail constructed by joining small metal rings until they formed a vest. But of course, the purpose of a soldier's breastplate, just like the breastplate of righteousness, is to protect vital organs in battle. Remember, by faith in Jesus Christ's death, we are cleansed from our sins. God gives us a righteous standing before him and he also transforms us giving us the freedom in Christ to walk in righteousness. This righteousness, both declared and lived, is strong armor indeed for our new lives in Jesus. Then our feet are fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace, the good news of Jesus Christ. Now here, think of a soldier's sandals or boots, which allow them to be ready for any circumstance that comes their way. For us, readiness can relate to sharing the good news of Jesus, but we should also be ready to do the entire will of God in all areas of life. That's the awesome peace and freedom we receive 
through the saving power of the gospel. The shield of faith is next, which extinguishes all the flaming arrows of the evil one, allowing us to stand our ground in the midst of a spiritual attack. The enemy desires to take us down with his fiery darts, but God has given us the ability to fend them off. With God's help, we should be building our faith each and every day so that we can wield our shield more effectively when the big battles come our way. Pew, pew, pew. The helmet of salvation refers to the Roman soldier's helmet known as a galea. Galea came in all types, from simple head caps to ornate bronze helmets with colorful crests. For us, the helmet of salvation protects our knowledge that we have been rescued from our sins by God's grace. Our salvation given to us through our faith in Jesus Christ says that our sins are no longer counted against us. The helmet of salvation reminds us that there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Finally, Paul gives us an offensive weapon, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The sword of the Roman foot soldier was known as a gladius, double-edged for cutting with a tapered point for stabbing. The Bible, God's word, has everything we need for spiritual dicing and slicing. We're given all revelation of God's great love for us and all the ways that we could live an obedient, fruitful, and protected life in Him. I can't think of a greater spiritual weapon. When Jesus was tempted by Satan three times in the desert, it was the Word of God that Jesus used as His overpowering response each time. That's why we need to read our Bibles. It's God's Word that gives us the power to wear and to wield all our other pieces of armor, truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation. Oh, hi, it's TV's Dave Stotts, and I'm here to tell you to hit the thing and the thing and make sure you ring the, the thing for more of drive-through history because that's what we all need.